Well, greetings, everybody, and welcome to an FIR interview panel discussion here on uh, Google Plus Hangouts. Uh, with us are, uh, first of all, my co-host, Neville Hobson, uh, in the UK. Also, Stuart Bruce in the UK, and uh, Phil Gomes uh, from Edelman in Chicago. Hi, everyone. Hi. Greetings. So, we're here to talk Wikipedia, and uh, this all got rolling, at least the current initiative, uh, through dual posts that I think I, I gather were sort of serendipitous in how they uh, came about. There was no coordination, Phil, between you and Stuart, but you came out with posts, uh, I, I guess it was within minutes of each other, wasn't it? Yeah, I think a... Um uh, once I once I posted mine, I know my colleague uh, my colleague Marshall Manson in the UK, um, you know, knew that I was going to post this, and then I guess he forwarded it to Stewart, who kind of went, "Whoa," because <laughs> because I think I think he preceded me by about five minutes. So, so uh, maybe we could start off by uh, articulating what the issue is. Uh, both of you brought a, a slightly different perspective to your post, but this is about the issue of public relations people who are clearly not neutral. They're paid to represent their employers and their clients, uh, trying to ensure accuracy uh, in company and brand listings on Wikipedia. So, Stuart, how about uh, we start with you? What do you see as the, the issue? What precipitated your post? Well, I think what precipitated it for me is because there'd been a kind of number of, well, first of all, before Christmas, there was the quite well-publicized um, incident with Bell Pottinger having been kind of unmasked for doing various um, edits on Wikipedia um, using kind of fake IDs. And so that kind of gave me, sort of reawakened my interest in something that I guess has been on most kind of online PR people's agenda for a while. Um, but what actually sort of kicked it off was when Tom Watson, the kind of UK MP, um, unmasked another kind of um, UK PR company of making changes to Wikipedia. And I think it was, it was the second case was one where I kind of, um, kind of they, they hadn't actually done it in a kind of anonymous way. It was actually clear it was, it was them that had done it. And I think the issue for me is I, you know, I like Wikipedia, I use it. You know, and the reason that Wikipedia is a valuable source is because you want to go there for accurate information. And the whole kind of premise that we have at the moment about the kind of the rules are quite confusing because if you actually read the, the rules, there are things that PR people are allowed to do to stick within the rules. But then you have kind of pe people's stamps coming up quite publicly on frequent occasions, but they never do it, which is slightly different to what the rules say. And I just basically would like to see a constructive dialogue that comes out with some clarity rather than what's happened in the past, which has been kind of a rather destructive dialogue. And Phil, your post was an open letter to Jimmy Wales. Your view was? Um, yeah, my view was, um, yeah, it, it seems that Stuart and I were, were pretty much on, on parallel tracks here um, in that uh, at, at, at a certain level, Wikipedia kind of wants to have it both ways, right? Um, now, it's probably not fair to refer to Wikipedians as kind of a block, but in general, uh, it wants to be thought of as a, uh, an available and somewhat authoritative source. Um, but in my experience and in the conversations that I have with companies, um, it's not about whitewashing negative stuff or um, over-hyping you know, certain CSR initiatives or that sort of thing. Sometimes it's as simple as financial data being wrong in one case by about five years. Um, in another case, uh, we had a, a company that was still being in businesses, had long divested itself from. And uh, in, you know, very often the... Um, and we just lost Neville. Um, and very often the um, uh, the entreaties to the talk pages, which is uh, deemed to be the way to um, to engage engage the Wikipedia community, uh, had gone ignored for quite a long time. And so uh, it was it was with that in mind that I was thinking, well, what is the most desirable condition for an entry? Is it that it is uh, old and outdated, but untouched by 
a um, corporate communicator who's close to the data and operating above board and unethical practice, or maybe uh, the um, the preferred status is uh, that it has been um, you know it has been reviewed by again a public relations professional operating within ethical practice and. Um, you know, up making it, you know, updated in a way that uh, respects the facts and doesn't necessarily delve into um, items upon which reasonable people can disagree um, or, um, you know, matters of positioning and emphasis and that sort of thing. So um, the response that we got back, I think, pretty overwhelmingly was, and, and I'm talking about not only on my blog, but in the uh, crew Facebook group was that uh, there's no reason ever for a PR person to touch the entry itself in any circumstance whatsoever. However, there are folks that have uh, joined our group, uh, one gentleman in particular, Robert Lawton, who says, now, wait a minute, let's put some guardrails around this, because if it comes to something where it's the founding date, it's the uh, annual financial turnover. It's the number of employees, uh, you know, things like that, independently verifiable data. Then, you know, given all of that, you know, perhaps why not? So uh, Robert and, um, you know, a lot of the other participants, of course, John Cass, whose uh, idea was to create the Facebook group anyway, um, Constantine Bostra and, and, and those folks have done a really good job of putting up things for people to react to. And uh, I think that's very much uh, an important first step. Uh, there's also, well, for, first of all, let's talk about the Facebook group, uh, because that's really where this conversation started to roll. That was John's idea. Uh, Phil, you created it. And the goal of it is what? Well, um, the goal of it, I, I think, is to have an, a, a very long overdue conversation. <laughs> I, I mean, right now, I think, I think perhaps both sides of this debate have not been terribly cooperative. Um, and I, I think that there are certain areas where I think um, Wikipedia has perhaps been doctrinaire to the point of... Um, harming the accuracy of the entries that are that are within its pages um, so now you know we have a we have a place where the the debate can take place and in a place that you know some people might ask why pick Facebook it's just it's the very PR decision of kind of going where the people are um, you know, because as, as it, it takes, of course, quite a bit of learning to um, learn how to operate within, of course, the, the Wikipedia environment. And we wanted to democratize the discussion such that it can take place on that forum. And then as things start to mature, they can um, eventually move into um, the Wiki project space and that sort of thing. I've got a question to ask <clears throat> or uh, uh, offer a comment, see what you think of this. Uh, Phil in particular, but uh, I, I was noticing, it's interesting that what you just said, because uh, it seems to me that um, the biggest hurdle to still overcome, unless it has already been overcome, is this huge gap, this chasm uh, between uh, Wikipedia as embodied by Jimmy Wales and folks on our side of the fence in the PR profession, where uh, our side is accusing them of, of being completely arbitrary and draconianly uh, shutting the door to anyone editing any content, full stop, because in Jimmy's own words, we're full of spin and, and nothing that is not ethical. I had an interesting, a very impromptu discussion with him on Twitter a couple of days ago where this kind of came out a bit. I've seen uh, his comments on the group, uh, and I've seen a lot of the vitriol and some of the other comments. So looking at that picture, where does it currently stand? Is that chasm still there? And uh, in which case, what's next? Uh, but I guess the main question I've got, actually, uh, kind of leading on from all of that, is the last I saw, there were some very, very specific examples put forward by uh, Marshall Manson at Edelman, for instance, and Jimmy noted that I've got all this stuff, let me look into it, I'll get back to you tomorrow. Now, that was two days ago. Has that response happened, or are we still at the, you know, hey, Jimmy, are you there, or did you read it, or what, or is he waiting for us for something? Where, Where is the current position on all of this, then? As, um, you know, 
uh, Jimmy has made himself actually very available. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. And um, obviously the, and, and he's operated in very good faith in that he's not, he's not particularly interested in tar and feathering, you know, any particular company. Um, but he kind of wants to advise on, uh, you know, what's good practice, what's bad practice. And, um, the response that, that, that I got back, um, was, I mean, he's, he, he, he'll, he'll never be convinced. And he's a man with, with very deep feelings on this matter. He'll, 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 he'll never be convinced that a PR person can objectively add value to a particular entry and, and, and that sort of thing. However, he, he sees examples where, um, it's clear that, if, if, a, if a particular company edited a, an entry, for example, that the entries were actually good and it was, it was done in good faith. Um, and given that, though, he says that if you were to, to, to you know, take it on balance, right, he said he will always tip towards the, uh, current, um, the current guidance, which is, Take it to the talk pages, and if you're ignored, move it over to the you know conflict of interest notice board. And then, uh, if that you know doesn't work, then use the uh, OTRS help desk system. I mean, so we're we're coming to a point where um, the escalation procedures are becoming a lot more uh, are becoming a lot more clear, and um, and and I think that even that is an important step. And I, I guess if the goal is to allow a PR professional to uh, to directly edit Wikipedia, um, you know, I don't think the community is ready for that. Um, but what the community does seem behind, and I think most pe- reasonable people will agree, is that um, – uh, the escalation procedures just need to become a lot more clear. So, you know, for example, um, I, I mentioned uh, Robert Lawton a little bit earlier. Uh, he started a, uh, a flow chart on uh, Google Docs, right? So uh, given some of his guidance, and I know uh, Constantine um, has been uh, contributing to it as well, I think that's an important first step. Just make the rules clearer. Yeah. And I know, I know, Shell in particular, um, uh, he he kind of he, he echoes my sentiment in that um, you've got what they call guidelines, they've got what they call policies, they've got what they call rules, and there is a hierarchy to which one trumps the other, but they but they all like disagree. <laughs> so you know, one might say, like for example, right now there is uh, it says that there's an FAQ on the site that says I'm a PR person. Can I edit an entry for um, you know for factual you know to correct uh, incorrect data? And you know, and it says, hey, within these certain guidelines, absolutely. And then you sort of hold that up in terms of a uh, in terms of justification for certain activity. And then the response is, well, you see, that's a that's a guideline, not a rule. And I'm, right. Well, and, and, and to Shell's point, and he said this on the site, is that we understand the difference between the two, um, but there's never a situation where they should be contradictory. <laughs> right. And so that's, that is, again, the goal is to achieve clarity for PR folks that want to do it the right way. Uh- right. Stuart, I know that in the in the UK, uh, the Chartered Institute of Public Relations, the CIPR, has announced uh, an initiative uh, with with Wikipedia. Are you uh, familiar with what is is behind that and and, and what's going to happen? Um, yeah, I'm actually speaking from the CIPR at the moment. Oh, the um, f- taking advantage of the means and free Wi-Fi. <laughs> um, well, Some really people go to Starbucks. Good. You go to the CIPR. <laughs> yes, absolutely. One of the latest tips from the CPR is that there has been a dialogue with Wikimedia um, so that uh, next week there's going to be a meeting um, here at the CIPR where we can talk about some of, the, some of these issues. And I think one of the things that Wikimedia is looking for the public relations profession to do is to actually come back with some concrete proposals because I think there's now more of an understanding amongst everybody about, about what some of the issues are but there's less clarity on kind of what the solution 
Um, and I also just wanted to kind of pick up on what Phil was saying about Jimmy Wales's kind of engagement on this. I do think we should we should be very positive and welcome some of the things that he's done. You know, so, for example, this morning I know that he went in and actually spoke and met with Bell Pottinger, um, and he had a meeting where with Bell Pottinger where there were journalists present and they talked about these issues quite openly um, about what about what needed to be done. And I think my understanding is that obviously Jimmy came at it very much from the kind of viewpoint that he always has done, and that Phil kind of outlined quite eloquently that kind of PR people should can never ever be the ones to be trusted and can never ever um, have a part in it. Um, but I think also one of the other issues is that Jimmy on his own is not is not a Wikipedia community, and there are other people who have come out and started talking about the importance of accuracy and being seen as that kind of voice of record. Um, so I, I, what I would like to see is the next move, both here in the UK and in the States, is that some of the, the professional bodies do actually come up with a coherent ask, because unless we're, we're asking for something coherent and we're all saying the same thing, then I can't really see this progressing very far. Mm. Well, doesn't uh, Constantine's proposed pilot project take us somewhere towards what you're aspiring to, uh, Stuart, do you think? I think, actually, well, when I first, when I first um, read Constantine's idea, I thought it was brilliant and thought, yep, yeah, that, that sounds right to me. But then when I started sitting down and actually thinking it through, I think one of the challenges is going to be getting the right entries where you can do that. And actually getting, you know, say if, if we're operating a consultancy environment, getting clients that we can actually work with on the project. Um, and I think potentially because of the attention that it will be focused on, it won't be typical. Um, so it, it might, is, is my kind of answer, but I can see pitfalls as well. I mean, I'd be, I'd be interested in what kind of the rest of you think. I, I think it's a great start, and um, you know, I, I'd also like to say too that we have to keep in mind that um, non-English language Wikipedia is actually much larger than yeah. English language Wikipedia, and so it's been suggested by um, uh, Jerry Corbett of the, he's the chair and CEO of the PRSA. It's been suggested by Jerry Corbett that you know at a certain point. Um, shouldn't this tie up into something like the Global Alliance, right? So the Global Alliance, for people who are unfamiliar, is sort of a uh, mega consortium, sort of where a, a, a lot of uh, um, you know regional uh, PR uh, associations sort of have you know can have a, a bit of a dotted line relationship to. Um, because I mean, it, it's you know as as it was pointed out in the crew group, there are different Wikipedia cultures per language, right? We each with different kind of ideas in terms of how Wikipedia should be, um, you know, should be handled and addressed. So um, I just think that any effort uh, remains uh, sensitive to that reality. So. And, and uh, Constantine's proposal is really about a, a small group of, of PR people uh, who are acknowledged uh, as, as members of a pilot program to make these kinds of edits uh, in order to kind of test how well the process works and to uh, establish that kind of connection with the uh, admins, right? Is is that sum it up fairly? I think so. Yeah. Um, you know, and I, I think there's going to be there's going to be a little bit of resistance there, but I, I think we can work up to that fairly quickly. Uh, Actually, that. That resistance you mentioned, Phil, was marked in that uh, impromptu exchange I had with Jimmy Wales on Twitter, right. where I mentioned that to him and asked him to outright what he thought of it. His only and he did was, comment on it, yeah. Yeah, we don't need it. We've got the procedure in place. So, uh, and he then repeated that on on the in the crew page, and I don't think his position will have changed on that at all. Mm. I, I do think Phil's point about other languages as well is actually a very important issue. I was out um, in the Gulf just before Christmas, and that was one of the issues that was raised by some of the people I was speaking to there, whether about some of the Arabic language pages and the challenges available. Yeah. And when I was kind of putting forward suggestions about what you would normally do, and their kind of mass response was basically, well, that wouldn't work. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, 
So, uh, and I, uh, you know, I haven't had time enough to go into some of the some of the entries that they were talking about that they had concerns with in the discussions. They've had the challenge being that I, I can't really sort of read out of the script. But one of the things I want to do is kind of investigate that a little bit more and find out what the issues are in different regions and different languages. Because I, I know there are things there that we need to address. One of the uh, issues that, that keeps coming up, uh, the reason that there is so much resistance to paid editors, uh, is that one of the principal tenets of Wikipedia is neutrality. Um, but, you know, Chip Griffin, who's been participating in this group, uh, is, is a uh, sort of a leading advocate that, that objectivity is a myth, that everybody brings their bias to everything we do. Uh, there are certainly editors who, by looking at their IP addresses, you can't tell that they are vehemently anti-genetically modified organisms or, uh, you know, vehemently right or vehemently left. Uh, does, it, does it make any sense to, to address this with the Wikipedia community, or is it really just a matter of finding a way to work together within the constraints of that neutrality you know, imperative? I think we've got, there's an issue here because the, you know, one of the fundamental sort of tenets of Wikipedia is this neutral point of view. But I think I would go with the view that that's actually quite difficult. I, I don't have a neutral point of view on many things. Once, once you start to learn about an issue, if you're a human and you have emotions, it's inevitable you develop opinions on it. And I think the more you know about it, the more opinionated you will become. And yes, you'll know what those opinions are and you can control them to some extent. But I feel I still think you're subconscious that that neutral point of view, if you've actually got anything interesting or expertise, is extremely difficult to maintain just because of human nature. But it, because it's a fundamental tenet of Wikipedia, I think it would be quite a difficult one to challenge, um, despite what our personal. Views. Well, it, it, it's it's analogous to this notion that, for example. Um, it, a, a discussion about religion is not of value unless it's uh, led by an atheist, right? <laughs> you know, and, 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 you know, could you, could you say that that atheist has a neutral point of view? And I think people very often confuse neutral point of view with being, you know, anti or against a certain topic, which, you know, obviously falls flat on its face. And I think the frustration, I think, from a lot of companies is that, um, why does activism get far more leeway than than what a company has to contribute? And um, you know, and they wonder, you know, maybe it's because it, is a company a nice big, you know, fat meaty target, um, you know, that, that and one that is not likely to generate a lot of sympathy in the public sphere. Um, whereas, you know, an, an activist, you know, perhaps. Um, you know, benefits from, you know, a certain point of view in certain circles, right? So, you know, I, I, I think that people kind of need to be really, really careful about how they describe, uh, you know, this topic of a neutral point of view and that sort of thing, um, because it, it could very easily get to a, a slippery slope. But at the same time, um, to focus on that, I think, would be to distract um distract the uh, distract us from the efforts that the the people in the crew group are trying to get to right it's just simply something that's not going to change right so isn't it at the heart of the uh, it seems to me though that this whole issue of neutral point of view seems to be one of the the core aspects of the purity of wikipedia because that's cited frequently. And in fact, you see it peppered in various entries when you go to a, a page that needs updating and, and someone's written about their, you know, questionable and tragedy of the point of view. Uh, it, it, it's, uh, it seems to me that, that the, the, the behaviors of some in our profession, unfortunately, uh, it, with the skullduggery that has been practiced, and there is evidence that that is the case, has really kind of sullied the field for everyone and seems to have um, I suppose, colored perceptions on the Wikipedia side in, in a very firm and very, very rigid way that all PR is like that. So therefore, is this something that, like many things about the profession, we've got to find a way to overcome? And that means education, dialogue, all that stuff that is beginning to happen by the looks of it. But in the meantime, 
Uh, would it not be the case then that whether we like it or not, we've got to make the current Wikipedia system work the way they want it to work? Uh, we have to pressure them to make it work effectively until such time as there is either some kind of trust or some agreement at some point between the authoritative decision makers on either side that enable us to do what we want to do, although to be frank, I'm not sure that, that having anyone edit directly articles given the structure of Wikipedia is ever going to happen. Uh, having said that again, uh, the, the way it currently is, is not working. To quote a, a politician over here, it's broken. It doesn't work well at all. Uh, so yet we can't force the issue, and indeed look at some of the rhetoric in crew, I think it's very self-defeating some of the approaches by some of our, our peers in that group. So I mean, I'm interested to know what you think of that. It, to me, it seems that simple. We've got to work the way that work until we can persuade them otherwise. Well, and, and is, isn't that the core of, of some of the ideas that I know that John and Constantine yeah, exactly. have been bringing up is the notion of, um, you know, show, don't tell, right? And um, and I think, I think there's value to that. There's going to be the rare client, I think, that is willing to become kind of a guinea pig here. Um, you know, companies are... You know, sometimes very risk averse with this kind of thing. They they understand that the early bird gets the worm, but it's, it's the second mouse that gets the cheese, right? So, um, you know, they they want to <laughs> kind of hang back, you know, perhaps and Ooh, and, you know, and 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 I want to and and I want to be I want to be and I definitely want to be fair here. Is that um, again? It's going to take the the special client or the special company to say, well, hey, you know. I, I'm willing to take a certain risk in order to show how we think this can be accomplished in ethical practice with, um, you know, within a certain guy, a certain set of guidelines. And, um, and, and I think that that'll be, you know, incredibly important, but I think prior to that, um, those guidelines need to be codified and frankly, they need to be found in a single place and they need, and, and they need to be, uh, at a point where uh, it can make all or most parties happy, and and just kind of see how that how that moves forward, right? I, I mean, I, I think those are the, those are kind of points by Neville and Phil are really important. There is a big education role here because yeah. one of the things I've been doing is speaking to some kind of younger people in PR about what they actually think, and to most of them, um, it's just a huge surprise that company Wikipedia pages aren't written by companies because their response is, well, who else would do it? You know, they, surely it's, when they read them, they already think that that's the source and um, that it's actually be. And, I, and, I, and I've done this with young people in other kind of professions as well, so it's not just PR. Their expectation is that this is where the entries are being created from. And I think that's one of the reasons why we've seen some of this kind of unethical behaviour is typically this is something that does get pushed further down in the firm. You know, not everybody's like kind of Edelman, where, you've got, where they've got senior practitioners who actually understand this. In too many big PR firms, this is being seen as something that, you know, the social media kid does. Um, right. They don't actually get it. They don't actually read. They're not deliberately setting out to reach the rules. No. no. Well, one of the things that has been... I think gratifying uh, out of the group is the fact that uh, you have uh, Arthur Yan and Keith Trivett from the PR department of the PRSA. You have Jerry Corbett, who's the CEO, and John Clemens, the interim, interim executive director at IEBC, uh, all participating in this group. Uh, and, and it seems to me that that opens the door for the association community to undertake an education effort. If more hmm. practitioners do this, not just ethically, but using the appropriate process, uh, making the kind of changes that uh, under the rules, there are, or at least under the FAQs, they're supposedly allowed to be able to make, uh, and uh, using that decision tree flowchart to take uh, conflicts uh, through the appropriate process, that might build greater trust with the admins that these people actually know how to engage this community and use this resource. Uh, is, is that an outcome that either or both of you see uh, possibly emerging from this discussion? That's the hope, but I'll, uh, I'll introduce one more wrinkle here. Um, is that, um, for example, it's, it's a very, very easy matter to see um, 
who who has edited an entry and how many times right, right? now such tools um, don't really take into account um, what the level of edit that was um, and that sort of thing. It just has a number that says that um, Bob Smith from Acme has edited this page X number of times, right? Now, you look at it from a, um, from a media relations perspective, um, and it's like all that you see there in glaring black and white is that Bob from Acme has edited the page X number of times, right? Now, um, certainly uh, a reporter or an activist can look at that and say, you know, and, and cry foul and say that's evil and that sort of thing. But I think there's an education uh, process that needs to happen, frankly, with the mainstream press, um, which has been, I think, you know, almost unwilling to uh, address this issue fully, that our Bob, our Bob from Acme guy may have edited an entry, you know, 15, 20 times, uh, but maybe it's because he was reversing vandalism. Maybe it's because um, it was the spelling of the CEO's name. Maybe uh, board members entered or left. Uh, maybe the financial information uh, was inaccurate in terms of um, uh, the annual report and that sort of thing. But all the people are going to see is that Bob from Acme edited it at X times. So there's, there's going to be some kind of education process, too, in terms of getting, I guess, the popular imagination to see all sides of the issue and that, in fact, corporate, rep corporate representatives more often than not, than not want to do the right thing. They know the consequence of, um, of how um, it might look if they're editing the Wikipedia entry. At the same time, many people don't feel that they have a choice. And some people go underground with it, right? They go covert. And, so. Exactly. And, 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 and it seems like every aspect of the system almost wants to encourage bad behavior, right? Mm -hmm. and, and I think that there, I think that this dialogue is important because, um, you know, I would argue that, again, most corporate practitioners want to do the right thing, but, um, and this is something that we're not going to solve in the next year or two, or you're even on this, this conversation here is the fact that PR has very bad PR, <laughs> right? And uh, yeah, that's not something we're going to solve very quickly, but maybe by, by demonstrating what above board ethical practice looks like and by, um, you know, showing the world by example that this is, what the PR community can do to contribute to the objective accuracy of these entries, I think that's a win-win for everybody. But we just have to overcome that trust issue. I agree. Stuart, a final thought from you. I know Phil has to run, and we don't want to run too long with this conversation, but uh, final observation. Yeah, a yeah, yeah, couple, couple of final points is I do think a twin track approach of education within the current system to make sure that it's being done right and continue dialogue with the Wikipedia community to improve it is the way to go. And then another kind of issue that we haven't really touched on um, but exists is the issue of completeness of entries, and especially for kind of smaller companies outside the US, that's a big problem in that there are kind of entries that have been created which, although they may be accurate, they're not particularly illuminating because they've kind of missed out the most relevant information or the type of information that might appear about their competitors. And there just simply isn't enough activity around those pages um, to see those changes happening anytime soon. Great. Well, I uh, appreciate both of you taking your time. This was uh, a, a challenge to, to juggle this across multiple time zones. And Neville, it's good to see that the mobile uh, application for uh, the Hangout is working well. Very, very good. I'm very impressed. This is the Google Plus app for Android. Really cool. Excellent. Excellent. So thanks, awesome. everybody, uh, and have a great day. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you, guys.